So last, last time when we left it, we were, we were able to call these uh, native functions from Lua that we'd bound using RTTR registration. And we were able to call functions with no parameters and functions with some parameters that were ints or shorts. Uh, but we weren't uh, currently picking up the return type and doing anything with that. So this time we probably want to handle just parameters with a, with a return value. Uh, I've added a, an add function there. It just takes an A and B, adds them together and returns an int. And I've registered that. So I'm going to use that as my test function see if we can get that working. Um, so this stuff all stays the same. We're getting collecting our parameters, invoking our function. Um, after the function's invoked there, uh, we get this variant result from RTTR. And the variant is just literally, it's, it's got the return value in there and it's also got the type information in there. So we can look at the type information, say, what is this? And then we can actually get the value out depending on what it is. We can do different stuff with it. Um, so this bit stays the same. If the result, uh, if the variant is invalid completely, that means something went wrong with the whole invoke. So we need to keep that. Uh, I'm just going to swap this out though for, uh, I should be using these Lua, or should have been using these Lua error messages. These are pretty much basically asserts, except they'll give us the Lua line numbers. So I'll probably use these in future instead of assert. Um, so I'll just keep that for now. Um, what I need to do is, if the result isn't valid, then that's still an error else. Uh, I want to check to see if that result is, I can say, is type void? Um, because uh, if the result, oh, if it's not void, sorry, if the return value that we get back from this, if the type of it is not void, then there's, I, I, I need to put out an error message here because we haven't handled um, unhandled return type from native method. And then that's the name of the method there. So yeah, just for now, we're going to say if the return type isn't void, then something's gone wrong. So we, we need to handle that case there. Um, so let's just put our, let's put our uh, call to our add in here. Uh, just make a little local. So that'll be our, our return. So it's global add, uh, let's just add 42 and 43 if I can type properly uh, so that C will be 85 and let's just pass that into the next function so we should be passing the 85 into there and we should see that hello world getting called with that parameter let's just see if that still works uh, unhandled return type from native method add uh, we could actually print out what the return type is that we don't know uh, because we know the results type so the result get type get name. This is a lot. This is the quite a lot of typing to get the string out of this. So we actually know the name of type. Untimed return type. And let's print it. Print it out there. So this will give us a decent error message with the line number as well as where it went wrong. So. Unhandle return type int from native method add. So we haven't handled what happens when an int gets returned from any function. But once we've handled it once, we've handled it for everyone. So that's pretty good. So um, uh, if the return type isn't void, then we can just do kind of what we did up here, which is just checking to see what these types are. Um, so we can do a very similar thing. If the, if the type is int, then we want to do something. Otherwise, we want to print our error out again because there's obviously more than one type that we're going to have to handle eventually. Um, so if the return type is an int, uh, we'll just push that to Lua. So we do our Lua push number. Uh, Lua push number. Uh, and we will get the value back from out of this variant. So I think we can do get value. Uh, which we can say, get it, get it me as an int, because we know we've just checked it, so we know what it is. So that should be all we need to do to push the number back onto the Lua stack. Oh, but we need to tell Lua that we're returning our number. So we need to tell it how many values are we returning. So we need number of return values. Um, I'll set that to zero up there. I mean, and we're supposed to be. Well, we should know at this point that we're returning one, but if our type isn't mapped then this error happens it might still be zero so we'll just set it to zero in this case we know we've pushed one onto the stack so we're returning one in this case it'll still be zero in the error case 
So our, our, our function will still have just nil if it tries to read that local, I think. I'm not exactly sure what will happen there. Um, but let's see what we get. Uh, so there you go. So that that's worked. So um, we called hello world one, hello world two. Then we did our add function on 42 and 43. We got the value back and we passed it over to hello world three. So we got our 85. So that is that is pretty much working. But obviously, as you can see, we're only handling the int type there. If we happen to change this for, well, let's say, let's say one of the programmers came along, changed the function signature, uh, this would then probably, well, this will then break the implementation. So we have to go through and handle all these number types that we're interested in. So unhandled return type, sure. At least it's telling us now, though, from native method add. So let's just handle the short case as well. So that'd be else if short. And there might be a, a better way, again, I've said this before, there might be a better way of handling this, but at least here we can see how this code is supposed to work. If it turns out the return result is a short, then we're going to push the short on, and then we're going to say we return one value, otherwise we're going to error. So this should be our code working again. There we go, so it's back to working except it's shorts instead of ints now. So we, we can successfully now um, bind any global method and and as long as it's got a return type that's either int or short, then we, we can use that in Lua and with no extra effort, all we have to do is is um, bind the method and just to prove a point there, we can do multiply as well. You can imagine if you were writing a math library or something, you might, might be some really complicated math in here. So we do multiply. And now we've got a multiply function that works in Lua. So you go back to your Lua script and we can now take, we can take uh, C and we can multiply it by two and return that in D and then we'll return D to the next thing. Hopefully it was as easy as that. As you can see, I only changed the code that I'm, I'm binding and I changed the Lua script, even though the Lua script's actually embedded in code here, this would normally be in its own file. So technically I haven't changed the actual code. We need to bind the stuff. And uh, 87, is that correct? I got back my, that should be 85. Oh, I called add instead of multiply. <laughs> so I need to multiply those two together. There we go. So I got 170 back. So there you go. So that's how quickly it is to bind a new function. Um, once you've got all this code working, you can see the, the Lua code, the Lua binding code didn't change at all. All I did was change my normal native code, make sure I registered my method. And then if somebody in script wants to use that, it's available for them to use. So everything's cool. So that's that's pretty good. That was quite an easy one. Uh, not sure what we'll do next time, but we'll, we'll push on with this um, uh, binding using this RTTR library and we'll see what else we can do with it. So I'll catch you for that one.